those who will go to hell part 4 first lesson st luke chapter 24 verse 26 second lesson romans chapter 8 verse 17 golden text hebrews chapter 12 verse 8 quote brethren it would have been something worthwhile if the whole world were present to listen to this vital revelation as contained in this gospel because the worldly people think that when they persecute hate falsely accuse you or kill you that they are doing you the greatest evil on earth not knowing that it is a crown of glory they are putting on your head however if the world had this knowledge they would have stopped persecuting you how then would you have these crowns of life christ said to peter thinkest thou not that i cannot now pray to my father and he can presently give me twelve legions of angels but how then would the scriptures be fulfilled that thus it must be all those who do not want suffering persecution hatred false accusation and abuses do not want this glory the world regards such condition as humiliation as the worst position in life from god's point of view it is the gateway to heaven therefore those who do not want to pass through this state of life are in hellfire do not rejoice and boast if you have never been persecuted afflicted suffered for righteousness sake because only those who pass through such suffering are the ones who are in heaven while the, un the unafflicted and unpersecuted ones are in hellfire take to the narrow gate you are told to get into the narrow gate because the broad way leads to destruction and those who are going into this broad way are many the narrow gate is the way the only and only a few people take to it the narrow gate is the different type of tribulations afflictions persecution false accusations scandals etc if you have come across these situations rejoice because your reward is great in heaven if you have not met with these conditions weep because your entrance into heaven is very remote you are in hellfire christ and other faithful men of old entered through this narrow gate of suffering they walked with god and pleased him and were rewarded this is the source of peace and life it is the way to heaven suffering for righteousness sake this suffering that we are talking about is not suffering as an evildoer a thief a fornicator adulterer a liar a busybody in other people matters immorality and lawlessness not at all if you suffer under the above conditions you are suffering for the sins that you have committed you are reaping what you sowed in the case of christ he committed no sin but he suffered for the doing of good works he was called beelzebub a lawbreaker a demon and the prince of demons because of these false accusations they could not regard him as the prince of peace the ruler of the universe these accusations did not make him change from his set purpose for the world 
to redeem mankind. Yet they persecuted him and even put him to death. People take delight in persecuting others and they think that they are getting away with it because things continue to be better with them. While with those who do not commit crimes or who are not immoral, things do not run smoothly. Do not be deceived. The former ones are in hellfire right now. Why do the wicked prosper and live longer? Many people ask the above question today. Such people who are wicked and take delight in wickedness are in hell. Do not envy them because they are condemned persons. When you look at the thieves, witches, wizards, liars, fornicators, etc., things are better with them. But you who are trying to do good, things are bad with you. This may disturb you and make you murmur against God. Never be perturbed. Suffer for the sake of righteousness, for yours is the kingdom of heaven. But the wicked are in hellfire. Why should you murmur against God when you know that immoral persons are in hellfire? The children of God must pass through suffering. They must be persecuted, hated, falsely accused, mocked at. But bear in mind that such actions constitute your passport to heaven. Do you see how broad is the way to hellfire? Men of ingratitude, unappreciative persons, people who take delight in doing evil are already in hellfire. In the world today, those who are in high positions of life are those who are having difficulty in life and when you ask them from their hearts of hearts they will confess that they are not enjoying life at all though they have wealth life with them is not what it should be why because they are in hellfire these are the people that you look upon as enjoying life because of their wealth but they are suffering what seems to you as happiness by the children of the world is suffering because they are already condemned but the children of God must pass through suffering to enter God's glory the cross means suffering you must not flout the instructions of God the children of God do not have any place in this world they are looked down upon in social life, status, government, and in the community, they are not of this world. Hell is not for them. This truth is hidden to the world. It is now revealed to you. Jesus knew that the only way back to heaven was for him to suffer. He endured persecution, hatred, disgrace, and shame for the sake of the kingdom. Read the first lesson. First lesson, St. Luke, Luke chapter 24, verse 26. Was it not necessary for Christ to suffer these things and to enter into his glory? Anyone that has suffered for righteousness' sake has separated himself from sin. In the last gospel in this series, you were told that if you have two garments and give one to the person that has none, that you can enter into the kingdom of God but I am telling you by the strength of this gospel that if you should give all your garments to the one that has none but you do not suffer for righteousness sake you cannot enter this kingdom of God the scripture vehemently says and if I give all my belongings to feed the poor and if I had and if I hand over my body to be burned and have not love I am not profited at all 
when you are praised and glorified for your evil doing, you are in hell. Pharaoh was great, and by the virtue of his position, he exalted himself and taunted the Most High God. You have heard what was the outcome. He and his host were drowned in the Red Sea. You have heard of Herod. He was similarly great. He exalted himself, but God brought him down. King Nebuchadnezzar challenged the Almighty God, only to find himself as an animal in the bush for seven years. The world is pitiable because the kingdom of God is hidden from them. Christ suffered even in the hands of those whom he has led. They were the first to pick up stones to stone him. At one instant, Christ asked them, Many good works have I showed you from my Father. For which of these works do you stone me? They said that it was not because of his good works why they wanted to stone him, but for the fact that he being a man called himself the Son of God. All those who are for the kingdom of God must likewise suffer. Keep on blessing those who persecute you. Be blessing and do not be cursing. Return evil for evil no more. Provide the things in the sight of all men. Do not avenge yourself or yield to wrath. If your enemy is hungry, feed him. If he is thirsty, give him something to drink. By so doing, you will eat coals of fire upon his head. See our Lord Jesus Christ on the cross, under such pains and disgrace, yet he pleaded with his Father, Father, forgive them, for they know not what they do. This was an outstanding example set for you. Consider the example of Job. He said, I have heard of thee by the hearing here, but now mine eyes see thee. When did Job see God face to face? Under suffering, distress. God comes near to you during the time of suffering. May we have the second Bible lesson read. Second lesson. Romans chapter 8 verse 17. If then we are children, we also we are also heirs, heirs indeed of God, but joint heirs with Christ, provided we suffer together that we may also be glorified together. All those who do not want to suffer are in hellfire. What will separate us from the love of Christ? Will tribulation, distress, persecution, hunger, nakedness, danger, or the sword? Paul said, I am convinced that neither death, nor life, nor angel, nor governments, nor things now, nor things to come, nor powers, nor creation will be able to separate us from the love of God in Christ Jesus our Lord. This is the yoke that you must put around your neck. Materialism is a snare and a hindrance to the heavenly glory. All those who are seeking for the glory of this world are in hellfire. Christ said, My kingdom is not part of this world. If my kingdom were of this world, my people would have fought so that I may not be delivered unto the enemies. The Jews knew that Christ was innocent. Some of them knew that he was the Son of God, but out of jealousy, they nursed an animosity against him. Pilate knew this as well. He asked whether he should release Jesus to them, but they refused. They wanted Barabbas to be released instead of Jesus. They wanted their fellow man who was in hell with them. 
Jesus said, if the world hates you, know that it that they first hated me. Why then do you want the world to love you? Those who are in friendship with the world are in enmity with God. Such ones are in hell. Christ said, I have spoken these things to you so that you may not stumble. Men will expel you from the synagogue. In fact, the hour is coming when anyone that kills you will imagine that he has done a service to God. But they will do this thing because they have not come to know either the Father or me. Consider what the people did to John the Baptist and to Christ himself. Thus must all his followers pass through this suffering to eternal glory. May we read again the golden text. Golden text. Hebrews chapter 12 verse 8 But if you are without the discipline of which all have become partakers, you are really illegitimate, ch illegitimate children and not sons. How can one be smoking, snuffing, stealing, lying, fornicating, committing adultery and all forms of abomination and such ones still boast that things are going well with him. They are in hell. An illegitimate child is never wanted or owned by anyone. No one cares what happens to him. He is just left alone to suffer any fate that comes his way. He is a bastard. And so, it is with anyone who does not suffer or is disciplined by God. It means that he does not have God and he is not for this kingdom. From ancient times, the children of God passed through sufferings. They were from time to time chastised and disciplined by God. When Saul, who later became Paul, did not see this light of truth, he persecuted the congregation of God. According to records, Paul testified, when the blood of Stephen, your witness, was being spilled, I myself was also standing by and approving and guarding the outer garments of those who were doing away with him. In fact, by then, Paul thought that he was doing a righteous work. He at one time received letters from the high priest to go and kill all the followers of Christ. When he was later converted, these things turned around against him. Today, you may wonder why the world hates the brotherhood of the cross and star. The reason is that brotherhood of the cross and star is the kingdom of God, while the children of this world are in Satan's kingdom. It is stated in the scriptures, those wearing white robes, who are they and where do they come from? These are the ones that come out of great tribulation and they have washed their robes and made them white in the blood of the Lamb. Once you get into brotherhood of the cross and star, all hatred mounts up against you because you no more walk in the same way with the world. The backsliders, the disgruntled ones who became inactive and find their way out of brotherhood are back to hellfire, a worse condition than when they were not called into the kingdom. Do not doubt if you see those who have come in and yet they have no peace and things are even getting worse with them. They have been cast into hell because they do not have the true identity. Do you remember the illustration of the man that made a feast 
and invited people to come for the feast? The record stated, when the king came in to inspect the guests, he caught sight of a man who was not clothed in a Maria's garment. So he said to him, Follow, fellow, how did you get in here and not having a Maria's garment? He was rendered speechless. Then the king said to the servant, Bind his hands and feet and throw him out into the darkness where there is weeping and gnashing of teeth. That is hell. What is the official garment? It is suffering, tribulation, distress, hatred, and so forth, all for the sake of the kingdom. There are those who would not put on this garment, both the spiritual and the physical garments, because of fear and shame. But Christ said, Anyone who is ashamed of me, I will also be ashamed of him before my Father. If you die with him, you will also be raised up with him. If you suffer with him, you will reign with him. If you deny him, he will deny you. This kingdom requires humility. People like Nicodemus thought of the high of thought of their high positions. You must become a little child. There is no agreement between light and darkness. Brought out of the cross and star is the kingdom of God, and all those who have chosen to suffer for righteousness sake are in heaven, but those outside are in hellfire. Brotherhood therefore must be hated. Paul said, as for this sect, nothing well is spoken about it. From Abel onwards, which of the prophets did people not kill? That was why Elijah prayed for fire to come down and consume his persecutors. But God said that not all his prophets were killed, for there was a remnant for him who have not bowed down to Baal. He numbered them to be 7,000. Illustratively, those who are for heaven are not many. Those who are going to hell are countless. Because of pride, arrogancy, and this world's showy display of one's means of life, such people would not want to humble themselves. They would not go barefooted. They would not want to bow down and knock their heads on the ground in worship of their Creator. Because of their vain position in this life, they would not worship a human being nor give him honor. That is why such people are having a rough time in hell now. Their names have been written in the book of eternal torment in the lake that burns with sulfur, the lake of fire. Brethren, those who have ears to hear, let them hear. May God bless his holy words. Amen. End of quote. Peace in the name of our Lord Jesus Christ. Amen. Thank you, Father.